Ah, see where, where we are. To. Well, golf as opposed to um, as opposed to opinion, and the number of people who've sent me a message to say, "Ask me, I stopped quad this, I stopped quad that." I said, Right. I should have a list, the, the length of the wall of questions everyone wants to ask. Uh, and I'll just well, I, I may have to, uh, you know, disappoint uh, a lot of people if I don't uh, answer it uh, correctly. So oh, uh... no, I'll, I'll, it'll, be, it'll be great. And I, really, I thought, you know, it'd be nice to have a chat with you about, you know, certain things that we've, we've almost discovered through the, th the, the 3D uh, work that you've done. And certainly, you know, last week I spoke to Jamie Sadlowski, who was obviously in the lab um, mm, yeah. probably th three years ago or something. I, I can't remember the exact date. And, uh, and, and, and looking how he moved and things, you know, and there's this, I think that, you know, we see the, the animations that, that come through and come out of it. And we see this, this difference now in, in how players are moving, you know. And I thought, oh, it'd be great to talk to you about, you know, what, what what you see in terms of you know the the ground reaction forces of of players you know and and also what 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 I think is really great is the drills you have are so simple but so effective done well and and they're the sort of things that you know once you understand what they're actually doing and and I know when when I've asked you for advice in the past with players and you give me the rope drill and some kettlebell. It, it really changed the coordination and their ability to to move. Hmm. Yeah, um, I I think I, now is a you know an exciting time to be involved in golf because um, obviously uh, many people have all the experiences accumulated for the last uh, you know century or so, and then now we have access to uh, you know all the research equipment and uh, systems. So now we can actually uh, um, test whether you know what I, what we believe uh, is true or not. So now we do, we do have the means to uh, you know test whether we're doing it uh, right or not. So um, a lot of new information is coming out now, and then uh, so in in, ter in the perspective of uh, you know golf professionals, that you you have uh, different choices. Whether you uh, the first choice is obviously you embrace the uh, all the new information, so you can be uh, more proactive and you can embrace all the new information and then try to refine uh, you know what you do, or you can actually have exactly the opposite. So uh, you just refuse all the information and then just uh, stick to uh, what you have done, or you can be uh, in the middle somewhere. You you're not quite active uh, in terms of uh, accepting the information, but you just uh, follow you know, uh, more passively. But, um, you know, I think a, a, you know, a good instructor who really cares, uh, you know, students must embrace uh, all the new information and then, uh, you know, clearly uh, uh, would carefully assess, uh, you know, what, what you are doing now, whether it is really, uh, you know, uh, evidence-based or, it's just uh, based on your experience or your preference. So uh, I think it's an exciting time now. And then, uh, you know, for uh, instructors, you have a lot more choices now. So uh, all you need to be, is just, uh, all you need to do is just uh, be open-minded and then uh, listen carefully what, uh, you, know, um, you know, what the new information basically uh, tells us. So uh, that's where we are. And, and what, um, what do you class as the new information? Well, in a sense, uh, there may be a, a nothing new, in a sense, because if you look at all the uh, famous golfers uh, in the past, they did certain things. And then uh, in the modern golf, uh, you know, obviously many golfers are doing something differently. Uh, so we have some uh, changes uh, in terms of uh, teaching golf and in terms of uh, playing golf. So, but when we apply the scientific uh, uh, methods, uh, and then use the tools to understand uh, why this should be done this way or that way, or w what is uh, basically uh, biomechanically uh, uh, good golf swing. You know, in the quest of uh, biomechanically uh, robust golf swing, we learn things, but uh, essentially, in a sense, it's not new, but uh, 
we are now we can just uh, tell whether this is uh, good or bad based on uh, the evidences. So uh, we're not really dealing with something completely new, but in a sense we are going back to uh, the old, uh, uh, you know, practices in some cases. You know, you may call it the old school, uh, you know, golf, but um, there are some, uh, uh, you know, very uh, positive uh, aspects there. But at the same time, uh, you know, you see uh, some new, uh, you know, uh, trends in these days. But the, as far as the, you know, uh, the actual uh, uh, golfing is concerned. We may not have, uh, you know, something completely new. And what you know, when when you when you when you from when you started to to now, what's the what's the thing that struck you the most about good players in terms of how they move? Um, initially, the aspect I paid attention to was the so-called the swing plane. Yeah. So it was not really about the golfer, but uh, you know, when a student of mine, I think it's uh, back uh, in 19, uh, I mean, 2007, I think, one student was, wanted to do, uh, you know, his uh, master's thesis uh, in uh, golf bar mechanics. So, uh, but at the time I was, uh, you know, new uh, uh, in the golf bar mechanics. So uh, I had no idea. So uh, to, uh, you know, come up with a reasonable uh, uh, question I was uh, surfing uh, on the internet and try to find some information floating around. And then one thing I immediately noticed was uh, the concept of swing plane. Uh, it's, it's more or less, a, a, you know, the so-called on-plane swing, uh, which is uh, advertised or, or advocated by, uh, uh, what's his name, uh, Hank Haney. But because uh, this area is, uh, Hank Haney is a stronghold uh, in, in, uh, in Texas and Dallas, so there were a lot of information about the, the so-called on-plane swing. But as soon as uh, you know, I uh, read the, the information, my reaction was, oh, no. Uh, <laughs> as a biomechanist, uh, you know, I studied many sports uh, over uh, you know, a number of years. And uh, I knew that, uh, mechanically speaking, it was not a good idea to uh, keep the club always uh, parallel to a certain uh, uh, angle or a certain plane. So naturally, uh, the topic we chose uh, in the beginning was uh, the swing plane. Uh, and then uh, he finished his uh, uh, master's uh, you know, paper. And then I continued working on that and then came up with the idea of uh, functional swing plane. And then uh, once you compute the swing plane and then try to uh, utilize it in the analysis, then you learn a lot more about the, uh, the swing patterns and things like that. So we could uh, start the classifying the swing patterns based on uh, you know, how the club moves relative to the swing plane uh, and so on. So uh, that was uh, really the trigger. And then um, I personally got interested in uh, golf biomechanics. So uh, I continued and uh, now... Uh, I guess uh, the main uh, selling point I have is uh, how to use the ground yeah. well. Yeah, but uh, again, okay, these, these are not completely new in my part because uh, this is the common issues, uh, you know, common aspects uh, in the human motion in other sports as well. So uh, it was quite natural for me uh, to look into uh, these areas. And how much, how much does golf, um, the, the ground reaction force in golf, mirror other sports? in terms of how our pressure moves in, in sort of, let's say, power moves or, you know, dynamic actions? Well, it depends on the nature of the, you know, movement and nature of the sport. Um, when you have to move a lot, then obviously you always have to work with the ground uh, to generate the necessary uh, you know, forces uh, to uh, generate the accelerations. Basically, when we move around, then it's all uh, about acceleration and deceleration. So in order to uh, generate acceleration and deceleration, you have to use uh, forces coming from outside your body. It's called the uh, external force. And the ground reaction force is uh, one of the main uh, external forces acting on the body. So unless you use this properly, then you will not be able to move that well. But in golf, essentially, you are hitting the ball uh, with the, the feet, the uh, generally in contact with the ground. So uh, you don't move your body a lot, but still your goal is to generate the higher clever speed, right? Yeah. So through uh, uh, mostly a rotational motion of the body. Then you know, the, the body is basically anchored to uh, the ground through the legs, 
in the feet. So in order to move the upper body uh, properly, then you have to use the ground. So uh, uh, regardless of the, uh, the, the sports, still uh, you have uh, uh, the ground reaction force plays an important role. And then I, uh, from early uh, days, I started focusing on uh, you know, the foot-ground interaction uh, in, in golf. And then uh, you know, we published a paper uh, last year a really good understanding of uh, what the golfer does during the golf swing. And, and you, then, would you say there's, a, there's a, a similarity in how good players use the ground in terms of how the legs and the, the pelvis move? Yep. So uh, what happens is if you don't use the ground that well, uh, still you can swing the uh, club. But in that case, uh, mainly relying on your muscles. So, uh, you know, and then you can certainly generate rotation of the upper body by rotating the lower body in the opposite direction. So it is possible, uh, you know, uh, to uh, generate the rotational motion of the upper body uh, without using the ground that well. But the but problem that, is that when you do that, yeah. when you do that, that, then you fail to uh, generate uh, high clever speed, uh, right? Yeah, yeah. So uh, you have to, uh, you know, so people are still using the ground, but some people use the ground, you know, a lot better than others. So we, we see that. Um, and then uh, if you uh, carefully look at uh, how the golfer is uh, utilizing the ground, essentially it's uh, uh, in, in a matter of uh, force exertion and also torque exertion. So you have to use the ground reaction force itself to control the, uh, the translational motion of the body. And also, you have to uh, use the, the torque. Uh, you have to, you know, use the torque to control the rotational uh, aspect of the body motion. So uh, all these are coming from the ground. Uh, so uh, if you use the ground well, then you are getting a lot of help from outside your body. And then what you do is uh, by moving your body properly, then you will be able to really catch, uh, you know, this help uh, in the form of uh, clever speed and, uh, you know, consistency in terms of uh, direction control and and the thing is it, it's you know when we when we think about ground reaction force in the feet it it's not just the legs that ground reaction force is is moving the whole body and um, in sequence as well yep so uh, we can uh, look at this in two different perspectives so uh, what happens between your body and the environment uh, the ground that's one aspect. And then what happens within your body? And then also, if we look at the body, we can uh, probably divide the body into uh, two parts. One is uh, uh, the, the lower body, the legs. Yeah. And then uh, the rest is uh, pelvis and above. So uh, what's mainly uh, moving is uh, pelvis and above, and particularly uh, thorax, uh, shoulder girders, arms, and the club. These are uh, you know, the ones showing a lot of uh, rotational motion. And so pelvis is uh, what's, uh, what's connecting the, the lower part and the upper part. And then, uh, you know, when you look at the uh, leg action, uh, depending on how you uh, use your, your legs, the pelvis motion will change. So the pelvis motion reflects the quality of uh, your interaction with the ground. So the pelvis, uh, the pelvis motion tells a lot about, uh, you know, your golf swing. And then... The pelvis and above, we have the rotational, uh, you know, uh, part, and that they have to develop uh, fast rotation by using the muscles and everything. So again, if we go back to the initial question of uh, what you do with the, the environment, that you use the ground well, and then try to generate uh, enough force and torque, which will allow you to accelerate and angularly accelerate your body. So that's one aspect. Another one is within your body, if you sequence your motion uh, properly, then you will be able to uh, transfer the rotational motion from the body to the club, so the club can have a high clever speed. So uh, the way I uh, approach this is uh, I basically have these two big pictures. One is how you work with the ground to get the external help. And then another one is uh, how you move your body to really catch this, uh, you know, uh, in, in the form of uh, high clever speed. 
And do you train those in two separate ways? Uh, what do you mean by uh, two separate ways? Would you, would, you, would you incorporate the ground reaction force that would, um, in a drill that would actually coordinate not just the lower body, but the upper body as well? Yeah, the, the drills I use uh, are basically uh, stepping-based, uh, step-based uh, drills. Um, because when you take steps during the uh, you know, practice, uh, during the drill, you automatically use the ground really well. And also stepping will uh, basically give you good uh, rhythm. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Uh, that part is uh, taken care of. And then with that also, you will be able to improve the, the way your body moves. So, uh, you know, uh, I, I'm basically, uh, I have uh, this a holistic approach. So I'm not really separating the, uh, in terms of uh, using the drills, I, I don't separate the two aspects. So, uh, you know, the stepping based drills, all the drills I use, they just uh, combine both aspects. Uh, and then uh, if you do these, these drills, then uh, you will be able to improve both aspects. And, and when, when, when you do the drills, it, it's quite obvious that you move your legs, then your arms, then your legs, then your arms, mm. which, which yeah. I think it, in golf is a little bit new because when, when golf has been taught in terms of the position of the golf club and, and where we are, the, what, what, what I see more is that the, the legs don't move early enough. And it's like a, it's like that's like quite a new uh, concept that actually the the swing starts before the club's moved. This um, because I uh, you know I've been uh, involved in golf only uh, for about last uh, ten years, so uh, I don't really know the history of golf. But uh, what I suspect is um, as the as golf instruction becomes a, a viable. Uh, uh, profession, then uh, people try to come up with uh, methods. <laughs> but... And then along the way, you have to come up with something uh, reasonably uh, you know, visible. Yeah. It's something you, you can uh, explain, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in the process of developing these methods, you know, a lot of things that came up but without testing them, without uh, really, uh, you know, uh, you know, any evidence. So, if you look at the natural movement pattern of the uh, humans, we're supposed to use the whole body. The, the body is basically structured in such a way that uh, the lower section, the, the legs, try to uh, translate the body around. And then the upper body, you know, uh, the, the thorax and uh, you know shoulder girdles and arms they rotate a lot to generate the you know the nece necessary final movement. So uh, we have uh, the combination of uh, translation and rotation. Even uh, different body parts uh, generally uh, have uh, different roles uh, along the way and so on. So this this is how the human body w works. And then the golf swing is not an uh, exception, but uh, in the modern golf the main problem is. Uh, you uh, discourage uh, golfers to uh, you know move the lower body. So uh, try to uh, keep the excess stationary and just uh, try to rotate. This is actually really a, a negative aspect of uh, modern golf. And uh, as a biomechanist, I have to fight against this, <laughs> you know. And um, so that's why I emphasize the, the importance of lower body. And uh, it, it's all about the natural movement pattern. So uh, in order to move uh, properly, then you have to use the lower body more uh, for translational uh, perspective and then upper body for uh, rotational uh, you know, uh, motions. So uh, even in, in golf, you don't move a lot, but in your movement pattern, you must have uh, this aspect mm -hmm. all uh, melt, uh, melting. And when, and when we see, um, when, when we look at, at, let's say, amateur players and things, and we see issues with the pelvis, right? Generally, mm -hmm. players either can't, can't control it, right, it, in, in different ways. So whether they, it, it over-rotates, you know, or it, mm -hmm. for, for most people, either over-rotate over or yeah, they, yes. they get this sort of... Uh, most of the people over, over rotate. Yes, that's true. 
or they get this, what you would class as uh, an early extension where the pelvis is going inwards and the body's coming upwards. Uh, I'm losing your uh, voice. Let's see. Let me check the uh, network. Well, I'll... Uh, I'll We're still here. Just... Let's see if we can... Aha, you're back. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I have uh, two different uh, Wi-Fi networks uh, in the house, okay. so, uh, yeah, so I switched to... Saying, we, we obviously see this concept where there's over-rotation in the, in the pelvis, and, it, and it's out of control. Or we have this sort of early extending move in the pelvis. Um, so uh, the over-rotation aspect, uh, that's quite common. Uh, so, uh, you know, s with the, the new information, uh, you know, another extreme is uh, so people say uh, moving the pelvis is important. And then with that, what happens is uh, people tend to uh, rotate the pelvis a lot. Particularly the pelvis, when the pelvis is rotating flat, then you tend to have uh, over rotation. Um, so that's one uh, uh, problem. And then uh, another issue, quite uh, sort of, this is uh, you know uh, what the instructors uh, talk about a lot is uh, early extension. But in my perspective, you don't have to worry about the early extension issue unless it is really bad. Okay. Unless you 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 can see uh, you know obvious, uh, uh, you know, standing up type uh, motion, then the uh, early extension is not a problem. Even in some cases, uh, I, I am aware that uh, even for normal motion of the pelvis is uh, in, incorrectly uh, labeled as uh, early extension. So that's uh, one issue, uh, you know, uh, uh, that, that I see in these days. So it is really important to understand no. how the pe pelvis moves. Uh, yeah, Go what I was going to do, if I can stand up in my humble, um, so you, okay. So to me then, what, what I would understand is that in, a, in an efficient pelvis movement would be more that it loads up into here. So you get the incline of the pelvis, you get the rotation. So you get the load through sort of your right side and maybe even up to your rib cage. And then that load is stopping me over-rotating on the way back? Would that be, would that be about right? Yeah, so always uh, when the pelvis rotates flat, so uh, almost uh, about the vertical axis, then that's where you have over-rotation, whether it's uh, during the backswing or during the downswing. So imagine, uh, you know, the, you're about to hit the ball, and then so your pelvis is inclined forward slightly. Okay, so it could be, uh, you know, 30-some degrees or whatever. So you are inclined uh, forward. And from this position, if you just rotate the pelvis about pelvis axis, not about the vertical axis. So if you, uh, you know, imagine uh, there is a, an axis uh, going along the spine, and then the pelvis section of that axis uh, is a pelvis axis, let's say, or in uh, biomechanics we call it longitudinal axis, but um, uh, it's an anatomical term. But so when you rotate your pelvis about that axis, the spine axis or the pelvis axis, then naturally the, during the backswing, the right side, uh, assuming uh, the, the golf is uh, right-handed, then the right hip goes up and the left hip goes down. Yeah. Okay. But in this motion, if you just rotate, then this motion is uh, a bit awkward. So you feel uh, a bit... Uh, uh, uncomfortable if you just rotate the pelvis. So the yeah. best is you introduce a slight uh, translation motion. So if you move away from the target slightly and then rotate about the pelvis, then get to give you a perfect uh, natural movement. So and how, during that how, how much translation is that among um, the players? I mean, obviously, it probably varies player to player. It, it could be just uh, centimeters, uh, maybe, uh, you know, uh, 
three centimeters, uh, you know. So it's it's not a lot. It's not yeah. a lot. But what's important is the the overall sequence. So you have translational motion first, and then rotate. Yeah. Instead of uh, rotate and translate at the same time. Yeah. So uh, now I call this a uh, uh, shift rotate shift rotate uh, rhythm. Yeah. yeah. So you know the low body, what the, the what the legs and the pelvis are doing is a shifting motion, shift the right and shift the left. Of course, uh, along the way, uh, the pelvis will also rotate. So uh, it's not uh, hundred percent just a shifting motion. But uh, so in your uh, imaging, you don't intentionally try to rotate the pelvis. Simply just to try to uh, shift the pelvis, then the pelvis will naturally rotate with that. Okay. So it's really important to have uh, what kind of image uh, you know you you uh, keep. Uh, uh, so during the backswing, instead of uh, uh, you know imagining imagining or imaging uh, the rotational motion of the pelvis, you simply move the pelvis away from the target a little bit, okay? and then try to uh, bring the right hip higher. So in your in your uh, imaging. What you are doing is essentially moving slightly away from the target and then bring the right hip that's higher. So in essence, I'm going, I, I feel like I'm going like this. I'm moving yeah, away so, and I'm moving it mm -hmm. up. Yeah. That's so, the, you know, when you uh, shift the pelvis and then moving the uh, hip higher, yeah. It naturally gives you rotation of the pelvis yeah. at the same time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then when you have enough lateral tilt of the pelvis, because uh, the right side is higher, the left side is lower, going lower, yeah. right? And so you have a lateral tilt of the pelvis. When you have enough lateral tilt, then you will not be able to rotate the pelvis a lot. So oh, it, okay. naturally, it naturally provides a, a, a stop for uh, excessive rotation of the pelvis. And is that, is that because of how the, the muscles around the hip work? Does it engage uh, the right muscles to sustain it? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's because of the anatomical structure of the hip joint. So when you develop a good amount of lateral tilt and then try to rotate, then you have a, a really good combination of rotation and the lateral tilt. So you yeah. don't have over, over rotation of the pelvis. And, and just... If we actually look at how much rotation, it's still 45 degrees of rotation, isn't it? Yeah, the, aver like the average is about 40 to 45 degrees. Yeah. Okay. So it's not much. And then some people may rotate more, some people rotate less, but the, the average is between 40 and 45. And then, uh, again, this rotation of the pelvis can be achieved without intentionally rotating the pelvis. If you try to rotate the pelvis intentionally, then you always go a lot more than that. You have uh, over rotation. But if in your imaging, you are just uh, shifting the pelvis slightly and then also try to move the right hip higher during the backswing, then it will give you a uh, natural uh, rotation of the pelvis. Again, this rotation is basically about the pelvis axis. Yeah, I've got yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, but in terms of uh, rhythm, you will shift first and then introduce the rotation motion. Yeah, I got you. Big, yeah, yeah. Which, so, where, which is where I've seen the drills shift, shift, shift to uh, rotate, to shift to rotate. Always shift and rotate, shift and rotate, and and that yeah. you know may, maybe the, the the imagery in in the mind should not necessarily be rotate, but should be moving upwards because yeah, for uh, take place for anyway. the pel pelvis motion, pelvis motion. Uh, don't uh, try to intentionally rotate the pelvis, but rather. If you think uh, you are shifting the pelvis slightly uh, you know, away from the target, at the same time try to bring the hip higher, naturally, you, in order to bring the right hip higher, you have to extend your right leg, right? Yeah, yeah, that will yeah. push, push, push the right hip backward so that the pelvis will rotate with that naturally. And, th and that keeps, you, keeps your body, your upper body, nice and centered or, I, I say centered, but Vertical yeah, so, so the, the spine basically rotates about its own axis, and then you don't see uh, the spine leaning away from the target during the back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, I that's think the, the, the pelvis is moved that way, 
then it's con it's controlling the axis of the spine as well, isn't it? Yeah. And then in that process, you know, even if you are moving the pelvis actively, your head does not move that much. Yeah. So you don't have to put the, you know, the, the club uh, here and then try to, uh, you know, hold it. Even if, uh, you know, you try to move the pelvis quite actively, still your head does not move that much. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, obviously, when, once, we, once we've made that move and we've, we've tilted the pelvis and we've rotated it to here, now, now it's got to go forward. So, so what, mm. how does that change now? We, you know, does it, does it level off or does it stay inclined for a time in order to put enough pressure forward? Still, uh, in the downswing, just to think it uh, the same way. You don't really have to uh, intentionally try to control the pelvis motion. As long as the legs are acting properly, then your pelvis will show uh, the motion, okay, the, and, the, the and, motion you expect. And what, what, so what it's, uh, about it, held, um, legs moving properly? If we're now... So okay. uh, the, the simple one is... Uh, uh, let me try this. Uh, one way to uh, uh, view this is, uh, imagine you have a rubber band, okay, yeah. thick rubber bands. Yeah. So you're holding one rubber band uh, with your right hand, but the other end is under the left foot. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, you are holding another rubber band with your left hand, but the other end is under the right foot. So in, yeah. essentially you have this X shape here. Yeah. So if you are holding the uh, rubber bands like that, and then pull, slide upward here, so without using your arm, but to try to rotate your body and then pull it, and then doing the downswing, the same thing. Wow. Pulling, pulling it. Yeah, so, and I know uh, many of you are using uh, rubber bands, thick rubber bands, but uh, use yeah. two of them. You know, if you can... Uh, if it's a closed one, then uh, you can just uh, run it uh, under your foot and they basically maintain this uh, X-shape uh, pattern here. The pull it up and the pull it up, pull it up and the pull it up. With this action, the pelvis will rotate about its own axis and then you will have a good uh, lateral tilt developing. And then okay. in, uh, in the course of motion, you are not just rotating the pelvis like this, but you have a shift rotate and a shift rotate, shift rotate, and a shift rotate. So there's during quite, the back swing, during the back swing, thing. you uh, during the back swing you have a shift and rotate, yeah. and the, in the down swing you have a shift and rotate. But rotation uh, of the back swing, and then shifting of down swing are overlapped. So in the back swing you have a shift and rotate, in the down swing you have a shift and rotate, but rotation part of uh, the backswing and then shift part of downswing is uh, overlapped. So, you know, what you have is a shift and rotate, a shift and rotate, shift and rotate. This is happening continuously. So when you do this, my pelvis, you don't see uh, my pelvis, but my pelvis is moving a lot. My legs are moving a lot. But if you look at my head, yeah, yeah. the head is not moving that much. Yeah. So, uh, you know, a lot of people are afraid of uh, moving the body. So, uh, that's, that's why uh, you don't use your, your you know, legs that much. But uh, even if you use your legs uh, and uh, your pelvis uh, actively, but still your uh, head does not move that much. It's because uh, it's uh, under control. When you have uh, shift to rotate, shift to rotate, and the these are overlapped, then you are continuously controlling your body motion. So you don't let your body go too much either way. Yeah, yeah. And you, there's a certain rhythm and timing to it as well when you do it well. Yeah, so essentially, uh, if I have to come up with the one keyword, which, you know, basically uh, embraces uh, all the uh, biomechanical principles of, uh, you know, swing, then that's rhythm. If I have to come up with just one word, then it will be rhythm. So uh, horizontally, we have a shift rotate and, and a shift rotate rhythm. Vertically, we have a upper, upward motion, downward motion, upward motion. Or in terms of uh, force, you have a push, you push the, against the ground, a push, unweight, and push. Yeah. So all these, uh, the, the, 
the most natural movement that gives you all these is uh, stepping. If you just uh, have a stepping action, then you have automatically all this rhythm. And then now, when you take a step, instead of uh, just uh, taking a step like this, you are essentially at the same time pushing laterally as well. Using your, your feet, you are pushing laterally. So this pushing will allow you to shift your body this way. And then later, you know, toward the end of the back, you have to push against the, the ground uh, this way to slow down uh, the motion that way. So, uh, you know, essentially uh, throughout the motion, laterally we have acceleration, deceleration, acceleration, deceleration, acceleration, deceleration, acceleration, deceleration. In terms of rotation, acceleration, deceleration, acceleration, deceleration. We always repeat acceleration, deceleration. And then in a, in a, in a dynamic swing, when we say a di, uh, it's a dynamic, that means we're using acceleration, deceleration really well. And then you have, you have a full, uh, you keep all these under control. You are actively using the ground to generate the lateral forces and also uh, the, the torques, but it's uh, under your control. So, uh, you know, you will be able to maintain good uh, dynamic balance uh, during this way. And, it, and, and it, it sets you up to, to then not be pulling on the club because the body is now moving freely. You know what I mean? And, and there's, it's, it, it, when, when, I see, when I see players who've been to see you do it and, and I watch you doing the drills, you can see even when they're swinging a club, there, there is a, a, you can see that, that translation mm -hmm. and there's no active like trying to drive the shoulders or pull the arms. You can see it's more natural working up through the pelvis and into the into the sort of the core of the body. So in the uh, modern instruction, uh, if you do not allow uh, the uh, you know active uh, use of the lower body, then what happens is uh, generally during the backswing, you will just uh, lift the arms and the club up because you don't have active body motion. Yeah. So. And particularly, uh, you know, uh, one uh, negative aspect of the concept of X factor is that uh, if the people uh, be uh, believe that uh, increasing the X factor will actually increase the clever speed, then naturally what they, they will try to do is uh, suppress the lower body motion, su suppress the pelvis motion, and they just uh, try to rotate the shoulder a lot, yeah, yeah. Yeah. right? Then this, uh, this makes it worse because uh, if you suppress your, uh, you know, Low body motion, then you you are not going to use the ground that well. So, some of the these uh, modern swing concepts actually uh, generate the detrimental effect on your swing. Uh, but um, so essentially, uh, what we see is that that the, the the rhythm is all coming from the low body action, right? Yeah. And then, uh, you know that uh, uh, improves. Uh, you know, of course, the uh, the foot ground interaction, but at the same time, it will also allow you to move your body uh, properly. So um, uh, this is uh, something I started recently, but uh, I started uh, posting uh, the before and after series on my Facebook and Instagram. Yeah. And if you look at, uh, you know, pretty much all the golfers, okay? uh, so uh, basically that's, uh, you know, the outcome of about 45 to an hour uh, it, uh, work with the player. So when we usually have a swing analysis, then uh, overall it's about a three-hour process. And then uh, we, we first capture the swings and analyze swing and then provide the feedback and so on. But uh, for last an hour, 45, to, uh, 45 minutes to an hour uh, session is, uh, you know, uh, for me. So I actually work with the player. I try to change the swing pattern of the player um, using the, you know, step-based drills. But uh, so after going through uh, the drills for about 45 minutes and an hour, when you look at the, uh, you know, how the swing pattern changes, it, in the beginning, most people show an arm dominant swing. Yeah. They're pretty much using yeah, the arms. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. All, just uh, all, just, all, just all lift, lift the down. arms, lift the arms and the club, and then try to do everything uh, in the downswing. So uh, essentially, it gives you an arm dominant, arm driven swing. But... The after one, the last one, 
will show uh, you know the players are using the body a lot more actively. So uh, all I do is just uh, try to uh, develop uh, you know uh, good uh, backbone of uh, all the you know swing patterns. So uh, essentially, uh, if uh, by going through uh, that forty-five minute uh, to an hour session with me, if the player can develop more uh, low body driven swing. Then uh, you know the rest can be uh, you know figured out uh, by the player and the coach. So uh, my job uh, mostly uh, you know when we have the swing analysis is to uh, just uh, uh, develop really good movement pattern uh, with the golfer. And then the rest of the, you know the rest should be done by the golfer and the coach. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but but it's it's interesting because I, I you know when when you see if if that lower body doesn't interact with the ground properly you know or the we're not giving the player the right information to to create the the correct rhythm and pattern then they, they automatically go to what they believe is going to create power which you know for a lot of lot of them mm -hmm. probably from the shoulders and their arms you know and we have a lot yeah. and we got to, i see a lot of players where we practice downswing drills in order to create uh, a certain